Absolutely, because you see, um, Africa is already producing medical, you know, pharmaceutical and medical equipment and, and supplies. I mean, we, we have the advantage of having uh, been through quite a few pandemics um, from HIV AIDS to Ebola and the rest of them. And those instances, those events in the, in the history of the continent led to some industry developing, but nowhere near what is required um, because these kinds of pandemics are the new normal. Uh, this is not likely the last one that the world will see or that Africa will see. Uh, and what it has revealed is that we are still in a very infant stage uh, of uh, having industries on the continent that meet the requirement of its pharmaceuticals and, and, and other medical supplies. Um, so hopefully at the African Union level, which does have uh, um, uh, an industrial policy around, um, uh, around production, that this can be activated and taken to a much higher level. Africa has the possibility to do this and the potential. Uh, we see already South African companies producing ventilators. Um, in, in, a, in a matter of, of weeks, we saw uh, industries uh, in, in several African countries, breweries go from you know, producing alcohol to doing hand sanitizer. So the potential is there, uh, but the, it requires policy direction uh, and decision uh, to take it to scale so that at the very minimum, Africa can produce most of what it needs rather than the current state, which is importing most of what it needs. Africa needs solidarity, first within itself. We need to tackle this as a people. As, uh, as, uh, so, so, you know, it, it, the revival of the Pan-African spirit is important. It's not, we're not gonna win this fight. We may win the battle, but not the war itself, if we fight on an individual basis as African countries, because we have such porous borders. And um, so our, you know, Africa's um, faith is sort of tied together. Uh, through these borders. And so any response to this that will be successful needs to be of a pan-African nature. It, there needs to be established that solidarity uh, between nations. Uh, the second thing, point I'd like to make is we cannot fight this with stigma. You know, uh, this we can begin to name where it comes from, you know, who brought it, who didn't bring it, who it attacks, who it doesn't attack. This is a virus that needs to bring us together as a human family, not divide us. And we can only win if we embrace compassion and embrace each other's needs and not target people, you know, or stigmatize uh, the, the, uh, the disease or um, leave anyone behind. You know, it's one of those diseases, one of those pandemics where we're only safe when everybody is safe. Success anywhere cannot be sustained without success everywhere. So this is important for the Africa region to understand that we don't have a choice. It's not, we don't have the luxury of not doing it together and not having that compassion spread, uh, expand. Um, the third point I, I, I'd like to make is that African governments cannot do this alone. Business is important. The business community, the private sector 
civil society, traditional leaders. We have a situation where social distancing is also disconnecting people socially and also removing people away from some of the things that sustain them and make them resilient, such as religious worship places. How, what is the role that religious leaders can play in ensuring that the spiritual health of their populations are maintained, those things that help them to keep hope alive and to stay connected with each other without necessarily gathering and infecting each other? How, how do we build that trust um, with governments um, so that there is also compliance because the social contract becomes absolutely necessary here where transparency and accountability is crucial and we're able to build trust between state and society. And for this, I think that we have um, we have to rely also on community leaders, on traditional leaders, on religious leaders, on business leaders, uh, to join voices with governments to build, construct this new trust that is required for, um, for the compliance and for the measures to work. Um, and finally, I think we cannot forget that before this crisis, there were some crises on the continent that um, need attention. Um, and, and whether we're talking about internally displaced populations uh, and refugees, 16 million of them across the region, across our region, that they will be disproportionately affected by this crisis. And we need to find ways to ensure that they are protected and that their needs continue to be met. Let us pray for those on the front lines, the health workers uh, in Africa who are risking their own lives to save ours. Let's, as Africans, come together and mobilize for them not only to celebrate them, but to ensure that they have the protective care they need to keep themselves and their families also safe. I think the spirit of volunteerism and really crowdsourcing support couldn't be more uh, vital than right now uh, so that our health workers can uh, be confident that they've got support behind them and they can continue to do the compassionate work they're doing without fear.